Hi. Thanks for joining us on the second day of the Iconic Art Conference for all our participants and also those that are watching live. Um, I'm RJ Bukula and I'll be presenting the last talk for today. And my topic is on making art that matters or art for advocacy. So just a little bit about myself, apart from what our wonderful MC mentioned. Um, I'm RJ Bukulo. Uh, originally, I was born and raised in Melbourne, Australia. So I grew up there, went to school there and everything. And then later, I lived in the States for a bit, for about six years, doing uh, missionary work for the church. And then the last few years, I've settled down here in the Philippines with my, with my wife and my daughter. As mentioned uh, earlier, um, I'm a, I've been making short films and documentaries for the last 10, 15 years. Um, and uh, some have won uh, awards locally and internationally at film festivals. I'm also a, a comic book creator. So I write, illustrate, and also self-publish my own comics, which I um, sell and promote at like conventions, Comic Con, Comic Cat, and also uh, can also be bought online at Secret Headquarters and also on Shopee as well. Uh, I was also a uh, two-time nominee at the Comic Cat Awards for my comic Suicide Girl and I See Copper. You can also uh, read my comics on PenLab. And lastly, I'm also a mental health ambassador. So I really uh, am passionate about uh, promoting awareness about mental health issues. And so I make digital content for YouTube, for Instagram, for Facebook, uh, trying to spread and disseminate more information so we can dispel the stigma surrounding mental health issues, especially stuff like depression and suicide. <laughs> In short, uh, I guess... Uh, I consider myself a visual storyteller because I really believe in the power of visual stories and the medium of film, online video, and even comics and graphic novels to tell important stories that can spread awareness and even inspiration and uplift people so that they can, oh, so that we can make a, a difference, make a better world, hopefully, through stories. So I want to begin first in this first part of, of my presentation, just uh, talking about my creative journey. And I think for uh, you multimedia art students, um, you're just beginning your journey or perhaps you're in the middle of it. And so here's a little, I guess, uh, insights on the path that I had taken, especially in my multimedia journey. And it wasn't the most obvious, but uh, as you'll see here, um, how it all began. It wasn't always a plan from the beginning. Uh, this is what I wanted to be. Or this is what I wanted to do. And, and that's life. Life ha is full of, <laughs> full of uh, left turns, right turns, and U-turns. So growing up in uh, Australia, uh, of course, uh, as a kid, you know, I, I was into like cartoons. Uh, so I was a 90s kid. You know, I was born in the 80s, but I grew up in the 90s. And so I was into like Ninja Turtles, X-Men cartoons. And of course, like I, I, I wanted to draw them. So, yeah, of course, started with tracing Muna, tracing these Ninja Turtles. And then later, I started making my own comics. I'm you know, making my own original characters, making stories, like even in grade school. And then later on in high school, like me and my best friend, you know, we, we, we got together and you know, made our own uh, comics and stories. And then like, we tried to like print them and sell them. So like his girlfriend, uh, his girlfriend's mom was a, a lawyer. And so we had like you know, unlimited uh, photocopying uh, facilities. So we made our own Ashcan comic and sold them at comics comic book stores in, in Melbourne. Uh, I guess that was my first uh, foray or experience into print, into yeah, self-publishing. But I guess at, even at that early age, like I was already really passionate about like making up stories and telling stories through visuals. In this case, through pictures and drawings and characters. So was that developed, you know, as, we, as you're going through grade school and high school and then you start you start to think about your career and your future. And so oh, what what course am I going to get into? Or what course do I want to do in, in university, in college? And so the logical choice for me was, of course, uh, graphic design. And so my talents or skills was more in, in drawing. And so I thought that was the, the course I was going to do. And so I was shopping around, looking at the different universities and their graphic design courses that they were offering. 
And then as I was like visiting the different universities and seeing uh, their facilities and what they provided, uh, there was one uh, w- one university. I I stumbled upon the multimedia room, and then they were showing all of their works, all their uh, motion graphics, um, digital film, visual effects, and instantly I fell in love with that. It's like, oh man, like. I think that's what I want to do. And so like in an instant, I wanted to change my career direction, uh, not from graphic design, but it to multimedia. And I was blessed and grateful that I was able to like, get into my first choice uh, university, which had which uh, provided the best uh, multimedia design course uh, in the country at that time at Swinburne University. And so doing that and then learning all the design principles and and you know learning all these things 3d animation 2d animation even coding gaming and all that there was one particular aspect of multimedia that really like uh hit the heart that really like uh, i gravitated to and it was filmmaking or digital filmmaking as soon as that was introduced to me like that's what i fell in love with it was like oh my gosh like i'm making stories again I, i'm making you know, it's like the bell, like when people ask you, oh, what do you want to what do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, like when you're a little kid, you say impossible things like oh, I want to be an astronaut or something like that's what it felt like. Like, you know, being a filmmaker, like it was one of those kind of impossible childish dreams, like being an astronaut. But when I got to experience it while I was doing multimedia, it's like, wow, I can actually make films and be a filmmaker. And so that's what I started to kind of specialize in in my multimedia journey. And around that time, uh, I was in my third year, my last year of of university, of college, um, I I fell into, I guess, a a depression, you know. I think I was about your age, I must say your age, uh, 20, 21 years old. And I know that time, I guess everything was just stacking up. The stress of uh, school, the stress of family, even the stress of relationships. And so... I don't know, I just, you know, uh, feeling so, like, down and beaten. And even, like, I think uh, once or twice I even had entertained suicidal thoughts. There was one time where, like, I was I was driving. I would get so, like, mad with self-pity. Like, you know, I drove on the other side of the road like, in front of an incoming truck. And, like, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I was just so lost in my life at that moment. And so I... I took a weird U-turn and I took, uh, I guess, a, uh, a dive into the unknown and I decided to leave everything. You know? I, I went to America. I, I left my family, my friends, my girlfriend at the time, uh, like my future career. And I went to become a missionary for the church. You know, I decided to just do something completely different, completely out there. And so you know, I thought like giving... Uh, why don't I give myself to something, like surrender myself to something, to a, a, a bigger cause, a greater cause. You know, let's see where this goes. And so it became a soul searching uh, journey for me, uh, you know, trying to find myself, my place in the world or what can I do or what can I give to the world. And so there I discovered, uh, I guess it's like a, a, a religious life. You know, it's almost like being a monk, but on the road as a missionary and so as a missionary uh, uh we would travel to different countries you know, i went to like latin america europe and china and like you know visiting families churches communities um and you know, to trying to help all these different people uh, especially uh, with the church and so that was a journey i took you know completely different and just dropped everything and interestingly, while I was doing this, this my spiritual journey, uh, I found also that you know I didn't have to give up everything, Bala. Like you know what I had done before, or my skills or talents, all of that too could also have could also be used for for the mission or for God. And so I was I eventually I started using like my, my multimedia skills and talents to help the mission. And so at first it began with like you know just documenting things with a camera, shooting things and editing things and later it was like organizing like big conferences, national conferences like in America or in Europe and then doing all the like uh, all the videos, slideshows and running multicam setups and then you know like nothing was wasted. So what I was before I left, I was still able to apply that and use that in in the in our mission. 
And so, uh, uh, eventually, you know, I, I really embraced that, that I could be this multimedia missionary. And so, eventually, yeah, we, I, I helped establish, when I moved to the Philippines, uh, I, I was living in Sao Pablo City uh, for a couple of years, you know, right there near your school. And now I established a, uh, a video production company there, Smith Films and Video uh, Productions. And, you know, first we were doing just like videos for the cathedral in San Pablo. And then we were doing stuff for the whole diocese. Then we were doing video uh, and production stuff for the local government. And then, you know, it started expanding, doing like, you know, eventually like, like weddings and events and other things for, for other people, even outside of Laguna, like out in uh, Manila many times. And there was also an opportunity where I, I was able to become a, uh, a video missionary for this global organization called One Billion Stories, where a, a group of uh, filmmakers or uh, videographers all over the world, they capture inspiring stories of faith, you know, kind of like um, uh, Humans of New York, if you know Humans of New York, where they just get stories of random people in the streets it's like this, but with, with, uh, with Catholics and you know, sharing on video, capturing on video uh, their inspiring faith stories and how they were transformed or healed. And so I was I was doing work for that as well. And then at the same time, doing all that, I was also making short films, writing original short films and even documentaries. And, and we had also like submitted those into film festivals and like um, uh, uh, gratefully, like they were start they they started getting recognition and we were able to win like the Catholic Mass Media Awards for best short film. We won award uh, overseas internationally for the Cygnus Asia Media Awards and and a few other like awards for our short films and like our short films were about like stuff that I experienced when I was a missionary. So meeting like youth, broken youth, youth with depression. Uh, youth who are in broken families or uh, people who have trouble uh, forgiving and, you know, and all, all, like all these things, you know, it, it was great. Like I was able to still do my, my passion uh, for God, do the things that I love. And, you know, uh, and I was, yeah, I was, I was serving God. I was doing what I loved. And but then there came a point, there came a time where I guess, okay, uh, well, what am I doing in my life? Do I like you know? Uh, I've been doing this for a few years. Uh, do I? I guess I need to you know settle down. Like where I'm gonna like settle? Uh, like you know which direction I'm gonna like go with. So like I was thinking at that time, am I gonna become a priest? Should I become a priest? Or study as a priest? And so I went for it. So I decided to go uh, study, and I went to study uh, my bachelor of philosophy at UST in Manila uh, in preparation to be a, a priest. Hopefully, maybe, and but during that time, uh, while I was back in school again, you know, I, I got to experience a lot of things there too. Because while I was at uh, at UST, I also joined and became an active participant of the Tomasian Film Society, and at that time too, I, I was still able to create like short films, and then there was, I guess, there was a turning point where uh, during one of my professors there, he was a, a Jesuit priest. Uh, so he saw some of my short films and he was he told me like w w like what are you doing here you know like like your films your videos i mean this can do so much more than what we priests do this this is so much more effective than our sermons and our our homilies you know? should be doing this instead and so like i really i guess i really made me think about oh wow like uh what should i be doing with my life and so I guess I kind of rediscovered my purpose again there while I was studying my philosophy. And, and philosophy is great too because that also like, like it helped me with a, a being a better writer, a script writer, and a storyteller. And so eventually I, I made the decision to, to leave the religious life, to go back into the, the real world as we'd call it. And, and now that this is where like... Uh, um, the hard stuff comes. This is where the struggle comes out because now I have to like you know, enter the, the real workforce. And so, I mean, it's hard being first uh, a freelancer or someone working in the creative field. And so keep in mind, this was before the pandemic. And so like at first, uh, the few jobs I was doing was like video editing for like weddings, uh, weddings in like other countries you know, in America for other like production companies and studios. And then doing uh marketing videos for uh, other foreign companies a company in australia you know, marketing videos like on social media 
now eventually like uh, now I've settled doing a f uh, being a film editor for movie trailers movie for uh, uh, movies in North America full length feature films from America and also foreign films the editing movie trailers for those kind of movies but it, it's really it's a real struggle being out into the workforce especially having been in that kind of uh, safe or kind of that closed environment of uh, the religious life or being a, a missionary and so yes the struggle is real if you haven't experienced it yet uh, after you graduate you'll, you'll definitely feel it especially the if you take on the the freelancing route uh, you take what you can and so uh, it was hard uh, I mean sometimes there's some late hours you go home tired and you know it, it was it can get really stressful and is demanding as a, you know, a lot of as a video editor you'll get lots of revisions and you think it's perfect but you know the client is always right and so yeah, it, it became very you know uh it was a strain it was a struggle you know grinding and hustling and then you know i, I thought to myself like is this it you know is this how it's gonna be like um i'm sweating my 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 butt off uh, but you know like am i enjoying this am i you know feeling some kind of fulfillment or happiness in this so this is where the idea of ikigai comes in so i'm going to talk uh, for those who haven't heard of uh the term or the idea of ikigai it's it's a japanese term and it's about finding meaning or purpose and so uh, hopefully this will help you um, and so the term, the idea of Ikigai, it originated in this place in Japan, or an island in Japan called Akinawa. And on this island, there are more people over the age of 100 years old than any other place in the world. And uh, that's why sometimes they call it the land of the immortals. Why? Because these people are living the most happiest, the most healthiest lives, and the most meaningful lives. They have found like peace and happiness in what they do. And a big part of it is because of this idea, this Japanese concept called Ikigai. So what is Ikigai? Uh, let's break it down. Uh, ikigai actually is a, is a word, uh, is two words that are combined. Iki, meaning life, and Gai, meaning value. Or in short, like, you know, it's, it's about finding, finding your Ikigai is about finding meaning or value in your life. So what is, you know... It's down to what is your reason for being? What are you supposed to do in your life? Why were you put on this earth to do? You know, pretty much is what it's saying. And and I guess it's our, our life's journey to find this Ikigai. As you'll see here in this diagram, you know, finding your Ikigai, actually, it, it's it's about, about finding the perfect harmony yeah. uh, of many personal and social aspects. And so, for example, you have to ask yourself. To find your Ikigai, you can ask yourself these uh, four questions you know what do you love doing and then what are you good at and then what can you get paid for and then what does the world need so as you see like if you have pen and paper you can actually make your own ikigai right now you know i encourage you like you know to make make uh, to do this exercise make these four circles that kind of interlap and then in each each circle, like fill in, like what do you love doing? Oh, I love drawing. I love uh, I love watercolor painting. Oh, I love uh, I love <laughs> riding the bike. I love jogging. I love exercising. I love so many. Things. I love collecting Funko Pops. You know, fill that in. What do you love? And then what are you good at? You know, like oh, uh, I'm good at uh, touch typing. I'm good at um, you know, uh, public speaking. I'm good at uh, using Photoshop. Then, <laughs> and then, sorry about that. Then, uh, what can you be paid for? So these are skills that you know that can be that can earn you money. So like maybe you're you're good at uh, uh, um, customer service. You're good at working with customers. You have great communication skills, or you, uh, yeah, great people skills, or you, you know, you, you have you have uh, beautiful looks. You, know, you can be in front of a camera. You can, you know, you have confidence. Um, and then, what the world? What does the world need? Uh, this this is what like how can you contribute to society or the world to make it a like a, a, a better place or help other people? So maybe you could help 
in the health industry or maybe in the education industry, uh, enlightening people. So when you fill out this Ikigai circle, uh, you'll start to see also other, like as the circles interlap, you'll also identify other uh, values. So for example, like when you're doing what you love and then you're also good at it, that can be considered your passion. Or if you're doing what you're good at and then you, you, you can also get paid for it, that's considered as your profession. Or maybe you're doing something that you're that you're getting paid for, but also it's what the world needs, and so that's considered as a vocation. Or you're doing something that the world needs, and then you also love doing that, and then that's your mission. And so you'll notice, as I had noticed in my own life, you know, you're doing these things, a combination of things of these things, but uh, rarely maybe you might not be doing all of them. You might not be in all of those four circles at the same time. And so the goal of Ikigai is to find something or to do something where you encapsulate all those four things and not just two or three. So for example, even if you were doing three of those four things, so for example, you're, you're like, I know somebody who's, who's doing pharmacy and you know, they're good at it. They can get paid really good for pharmacy and then of course the world needs it especially now in this kind of covid world where you know we need uh, more uh, like people who can uh, administer medicine and work all those kind of things but does that person love it and uh, because that person was kind of pressured to take that course even though she didn't really want to do it or maybe like um for someone like me like uh, i love um editing making videos you know i'm good at it and it can also get paid but then is this what the world needs you know maybe the you know when you examine yourself you'll see perhaps is what you'll find out like what's missing in your life or your your profession your career that you might need to fill in or or take up and then for me i think that's what it was like if you find yourself where you, you know you're burnt out or stressed with work or school even like what is it that can add value to your life to what you're doing or purpose you know or meaning and so you know for you re again like I, I really encourage and implore you to try and fill in uh, the ikigai circle and and really like self-reflect you know uh, for some, others will be easy for some of you it might be hard but you know uh, I, it's really helpful i think and so for example just my ikigai so far you know, so for example, I, I love telling stories and making inspiring films and videos. I'm good at graphic art design and script writing and film production and video editing. I get paid for influential video marketing and emotional storytelling. And then lastly, finding what the world needs. And this is what I found later on is I found that I could serve or give to the world this greater awareness of mental health issues like depression and suicide you know, from what i experienced as a missionary meeting different families and youth and then the work i was doing and even my own experience you know when i went through my own like depression you know that time too when i was feeling depressed and you know, i even wanted to make a comic at that time like and i was going to call it suicide girl and that character was going to think about the most creative and imaginative ways that she would like kill herself you know like that, that was my mindset back then Lo and behold, 10, 15 years later, I would eventually make that comic again. And this time it wasn't just going to be that, but it was going to be like a, a comic about someone dealing with like the thoughts of suicide, but overcoming it and finding, I guess, meaning in her life. And so that became my first comic, actually, Suicide Girl, uh, 10, 15 years in the making. But it finally happened. I was able to write it, draw it, publish it, and... It was it was nominated at the com annual Comic Ed Awards, and so I you know I, I made that comic like for myself. It was personal, you know, it was a personal story I wanted to tell. Something I feel like I wanted to do. It wasn't intentionally something to like spread mental health. It wasn't like an advocacy thing. But then like when I received feedback, people who bought the comic, people who read it, and, and it was overwhelming the positive uh, feedback that I got, even from like health professionals and doctors and, and young people uh, that, that felt really connected to the story. I was like, oh, wow, like, I didn't realize like th this kind of story can have an effect on people. And so, 
after that, like you know, uh, that time too, I was for, I I was on vacation in my hometown in Melbourne, Victoria, and so like I I bumped into my old uh, childhood friend uh, who's a he's a break dancer, and I wanted to make a a short documentary on him on his life because I've known him before, like you know, he's a, like how he helps the community. He teaches like um, young people or kids on the street how to do break dancing to get them off the you know. From from bad influence, from drugs or things like that, and so I was doing that recording, that documentary of him, and then again, what came out of that story, which wasn't intended, was his mental health struggle, his journey. Yumpala, like uh, for many years, he was also suffering from depression and and suicidal thoughts and tendencies, and it was the break dancing actually that was saving his life. So he found that if he didn't break dance, if he wasn't, you know, doing hip hop dance, like that's when he found himself falling back into that depression, that into that kind of uh, suicidal mindset. And so, knowing that he started like using break dancing and spreading hip hop culture to to other youth and people to help them, especially for men, you know, like because men, you know, we're all about macho, we're all about strong, you know, we can't show our weakness. And so, if they're holding all of that that depression inside of them that emotional sadness they need some kind of outlet and then that break dancing for my friend that was his outlet and so that's what the documentary i was making was about and becoming how a creative activity like dancing can help us heal in our in our mental health struggles and our mental health journey and so after doing the comic after doing that short documentary which also was selected became a finalist at uh, a few film festivals at Historia and Pagasa Film Festival with with uh, Vice President Lenny and then also uh, with the Globe Studios uh, 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 what's it called? Festival of uh, New Cinema it was selected there as well and it was also even uh, uh, included in uh, Cinema Laya that year uh, two years ago in the documentary section so I was, I was, I saw like the universe was conspiring to put me on this path of, you know, telling stories about mental health or mm-hmm. spreading this kind of mental health advocacy. And so uh, seeing these signs, I got, I really embraced it. You know, I started really purposefully doing more stories on mental health, more comics, graphic novels on mental health. Uh, more short films and videos on mental health and eventually you know I even like started my own YouTube channel on mental health and you know Instagram and and Facebook so that became now that filled my ikigai I found that last part that was missing that that would add you know that meaning into my life and what I was doing without throwing away all the other stuff that I was doing and so for you, like I encourage you, you know, like you're a multimedia artist, you know, you're there, you know, you're not just students, you're, you already are multimedia artists, you're, you're already professionals in the making, so like whatever you do, uh, Sana, you know, make sure it matters, you know, as a, as a multimedia creator, we have an immense power to communicate something, to, you know, to shake up the world, and might as well do it in a good way might as well say something meaningful say something important that can help society help our nation help our country and so here in this talk that's what we're talking about making art that matters you know you know like not just wasting our effort not just wasting our breath not just wasting our talent but doing so so we can help for a cause for a purpose and so for me it was mental health for you, uh, it doesn't have to be like a uh, mental health advocacy. You know, it could be something else. You know, it could be political, like like something like this, uh, like the the Timindiga movement, or it could be something as simple as you know, just just inspiring or uplifting somebody. You know, making inspirational content or uplifting content because there's so much negative negativity right now. There's so much fake news right now. You know, like it's so like everywhere you look on the news on a, on your feed. You know, it's like it's just it makes you depressed. So why not you contribute and counterflow by producing content that you know, that is meaningful that will bring light into people's lives. That's that has become my mission as a visual storyteller. You know, and uh. I'm not just gonna make stuff for entertainment's sake, and you know? I don't want to be just viral for something, you know, like a dance or something on TikTok. Like I want to contribute something that can really help society. So for this last part, I just want to share like uh, three tips on how you can make art 
that matters you know whatever field that may be you know whatever medium you use you know whether you're an illustrator whether you're an animator or uh, a filmmaker or whatever it may be you know using social media you know you can make a difference with the art that you make and how can we do this so first make your work purpose driven you know have a purpose for it you know know what you want to say so as a multimedia creator as a multimedia artist you know you have a platform a powerful flat platform that reaches a global audience like never before you know because of the internet so be meaningful in what you say and you know, know what message you want to say you know if you're gonna Sayang, like you have a platform, you know, might as well say something instead of saying nothing, you know. So have the end in mind, you know. It's uh, I like to compare it to like, you know, writing a thesis, you know. If you're making like a short film, for example, you're writing a script, you know, already know how you're going to end your story, your script, you know. Have the end in mind because that's like the ending is going to be like your thesis statement. That's the message that the audience will walk away with. That's the takeaway that they will go with. And then so wherever they go, they take it with them. It influences them. And then they'll share it with others and they'll influence others. And then that's how society transforms. So already have, you know, know the why of it. What are you trying to say with the, the work that you're creating? And also for yourself, being purpose-driven also is knowing your own why. Why are you doing this? Why are you making this piece of content? Is it just to be famous? Is it just to be viral? Is it just to get money? Or is there more to it? You really, you really want to help people because when the why is clear to you, then all the more will be meaningful to others and clear to others as well. Otherwise, without that why, you'll be putting out something to the world that is a, a blurry mess. You know, it'll be very malabo. Like, so what was the point of that? Uh, so being purpose driven. So what is your thesis statement? What's the takeaway or main idea your audience will remember? Number two. Make your work emotion driven. You know, aim for the heart, not the head, as I say. So what do I mean by emotion driven? Uh, there's a, a famous Hollywood video editor, a film editor, the most famous film editor, like multiple Oscar winning uh, film editor by the name of Walter Murch. And he came up with the, the rule of six when it comes to video editing. What the rule of six of what makes a good cut, a good edit. And so... It's a it's 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 a priority of six things to consider to make a, a good edit, and the last three going backwards, so like four, five, six, are more about like technical considerations, like in you know, a consistency of the screen, uh, eye tracing, and the two D and three D space. But the first three priority, so like um, number three is the rhythm and pacing when you're editing. Consider that number two, the number two priority when you're editing or creating a story is story. But guess what number one is? Well, Walter Murch, number one is emotion. You edit for emotion, for emotional impact. Because this is what really moves an audience. So imagine like you have, you know, the perfect story. It makes sense. It's logical. There's no continuity gaps or holes. There's no bloopers. Everything is technically competent. But if the viewer doesn't get moved by it, like he just watches it and then maybe appreciates the technical artistry of it, but like, isn't moved then perhaps you have to consider re-editing that you know reshaping that so that there can be more of an emotional impact and it doesn't just apply to editing it applies to writing it applies to acting it applies to even like music or music choice you know keeping things emotion like aiming for that emotional impact for your audience that will really get them more than um, doing something that just makes sense or that's something that is like intellectually stimulating and so, you know, emotionally driven, like politicians know this. They do this all the time, you know. Marketers and advertisers are always using this. They use and aim for emotion to really buy voters and buy customers. And so you as a storyteller, you might as well use these tactics for good. You know? Get these people on the side of good and influence them in a good way using emotion. If you have an argument, you have a point, the animal through emotion. So in the rule of six, emotion is number one priority. Like for example, just in this uh, in this 
an image here in the back. Uh, this short film, uh, the Pope Francis effect. So it was a story about uh, a mo- uh, a daughter and father who had like who were estranged because the dad walked out on them, and so she had trouble reconciling with him. And somehow the the visit of Pope Francis in the Philippines helped them recognize a, a healing and forgiveness. And so in the end, the final shot I used was this, like showing a, a kind of flashback shot of the father and the daughter when he, she was younger, uh, like sipping on, on, on juice, on Kool-Aid or whatever it is. And so it didn't make sense in the story. Like it's kind of random. It shows the end. But it, ending that, using that shot to end with, it left a fuzzy, warm, uplifting feeling in the audience, and then so that's what you know they'll walk away from after the film, feeling uh, that warm, inspired feeling inside of them. And even when when we were talking about, for example, in Purpose Driven, let's go back to number one. An uh, example here is like you know knowing to knowing the message that you want to say in your film. So in this film that I was making here, it was a. Um, a zombie sci-fi action film you know that's the genre but the actual story the theme of the story is about hiv aids awareness uh, but i using using this wild story of post-apocalypse zombies and even time travel i t- i wanted to tell the story of how um in terms of hiv aids awareness prevention is better than cure because there's no cure to aids yet and so using the story use and having that intent knowing that's my message prevention is better than cure i came up with a story that uses time travel literally time travel where from they're in the future where an aids mutated aids virus that turns people to zombies you know the only way to stop that is to go back in time and then prevent it and so that's how i channeled the message of prevention is better than cure in a literal sense in in this short film so number one again emotion driven uh, number one is purpose driven number two emotion driven and then number three to make uh, your art more meaningful or that matters uh have it story driven you know people love to hear stories you know we love to hear cuento the best filipinos like you know hearing uh, what's happening with our neighbors or hearing chismis but like we really, as humans, we do love hearing other human experiences. You know, we love hearing what happened to other people, not just out of curiosity, but like, like you know, somehow also it, it it can inspire us, it can help us, it can motivate us, it can even like anger us in a good way. And so, a great example of the power of stories, I think, for me is like uh, looking back at Jesus Christ. You know, he could have he could have bashed people in the head with like theology and you know teaching like telling people that you know like uh, like uh, i'm the son of god or even like showing flashing like miracles or whatever like no he chose to win and convert followers by telling simple stories parables that anybody could relate to and understand the poor the rich uh, different nations different countries he just told simple stories and this is how people converted to him to jesus you know and uh, same with us, you know, whatever you have a message that you want to say, uh, an advocacy that you're trying to promote or something that you're trying to, to express, you know, putting it into a story can really engage your viewer. You know, they really want, they'll really, you know, people, facts are different, you know. When you read facts in the news, it's one thing. But for example, if you hear, you know, the story of something happening, then all the more you get invested and drawn into it. Like, like so these last few days we've been having heavy rain you know you read about that in the news and like oh yeah it's 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 flooding in some areas but what if you saw that and you experienced that and you heard the stories of people who got affected by the heavy rains and the flooding that makes more difference than facts hearing those stories especially from human beings from people and so this last part i just want to like share what what Pope Francis actually said, because every year, every August 15, the Pope, he, we, he, well, the world actually celebrates World Communications Day, and he sends out a message every year. And then last year, he wanted to emphasize in his message the importance of stories, the importance and the power of stories. And so he was, he said, stories influence our lives, you know, whether in the form of fairy tales, novels, 
films, songs, news, even if we don't always realize it. So we don't know that. You know, like we hear stories everywhere, absorbing stories everywhere. It's not just on TV, but like you know, on YouTube, our neighbors, and our own homes. We're absorbing all these stories, and then like subconsciously, we are being changed by it. You know? And here, which is really to uh, what the Pope said, like in the age of fake news, we need stories that reveal who we truly are. The untold heroism of everyday life. So the Pope here is like encouraging that we tell true stories, genuine stories, authentic stories, hopeful stories of, you know, humans, you know, going through their struggles uh, in everyday life and showing the heroism of that like for me especially like you know here people who struggle with their anxiety people who struggle with their depression or, or thoughts of suicide you know that's what i try to capture in my stories whether it's in a comic book or on a short film or documentary and so again uh summing up our three tips you know, number one um, be purpose driven know what you want to say number two be emotion driven you know, aim for the heart to get the message across and number three use stories be story driven to get uh, your information or what you're expressing to your audience because that will engage them more and they will uh, connect more to that because people are people you know humans connect with each other's stories that's how we are and so for you guys you know i'm excited for you guys you know uh creative multimedia artists you know your future is like right in front of you you're at a crossroads you know not only are you like on the cusp of being an adult but also being a professional in the field and you have so much potential you can be anything you want you can be anyone you want but the question is are you gonna do it meaningfully you know is your work going to be meaningful is your life or what you do with your life going to be meaningful and so at this moment now in your life at in your age you can do all of this so you're just beginning your journey is just beginning so number one you know what's your story you know and it helps to know where you came from your influences and what you were doing and how you got to where you are now and then two find your ikigai what's missing in your life you know what should you be doing to make it more complete so that everything that you're doing is in harmony and nothing is wasted your skills your talents what you're doing for your work and career and also what you can do for society and lastly you know since you have the power make art that matters please make art that matters whatever you do gift it gift it to the world so that it can be a better place that's what we need right now and you you are the chosen ones you know you are neo you know you can gift this to the world and so i applaud your efforts i uh, i encourage you on your journey right now and hopefully uh, you gain some kind of insight in my presentation today and learn something or even learn something about yourself i think that's really important to really self-reflect and then on your journey forward i wish you well you know be positive go out there be bold don't be afraid to to say something you know, to give a message out into the world so thank you again for your time for having me i want to thank like ashley and the rest of the organizers here at the, those in the lycee multimedia arts society um if you want to like uh follow me or, or uh, see more of my content on mental health or even on filmmaking you can, you can follow my youtube channel ronald james bakulo or hit me up on instagram or facebook to see my other content there so thanks again thank you for uh listen listening and uh watching and for also participating in the last two days and hopefully you got something uh, out of that that can uh, really help you uh, thank you <laughs>